Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry MO. So, today's session is about uh, the factors uh, involving in designing a pontic. So, last session we completed the pontic designs, that is, uh, various designs we use in fixed partial denture. Uh, they are sanitary, rich lap, conical, ovate, and uh, facings, that is, pontic facing, true pontic, pontips. So, this uh, session is about the factors to be considered while designing a pontic. So basically we have three major categories to be considered while designing a pontic. They are biological, mechanical and aesthetic. So in biologic factors uh, we have the rich contact, uh, then the oral hygiene uh, considerations, then the pontic material and occlusal forces so we should aim at maintaining and preserving the residual ridge the abutments opposing teeth and supporting tissues so in ridge contact uh, pressure free contacts between the tissue and pontic is indicated okay so you know uh, the pontic will be compressing the tissue or the ridge in most of the cases so always try to uh, keep it pressure free that is there should be a space between the tissue and pontic or the pressure should be minimal because uh, we need to prevent ulceration and inflammation of soft tissues if any blanching of tissues occur during trying uh, we should uh, identify the pressure areas uh, using any disclosing medium and the pontic should be recontoured until the tissue contact is uh, becoming passive Regarding the oral hygiene considerations, uh, it is a main problem of pontic that it causes uh, irritation that is because of the microbial plaque accumulation underneath the pontic. So there will be toxins released from plaque. Then uh, there will be calculus formation and the chances of uh, tissue irritation and inflammation. So unlike RPD, uh, we just cannot uh, remove FPD for cleaning. So normally where tissue contact occurs, gingival area of the pontic is inaccessible. Okay, so devices such as uh, proxy brushes or superflows can be used to clean the underneath of pontic surface. If pontic has a concavity or depression in its gingival surface, there will be plaque accumulation which leads to inflammation. So therefore, FPD should be checked and corrected before cementation. Once it is cemented, it's very difficult to alter it because it is a fixed partial denture unlike removable partial denture. So in pontic material it should have good aesthetics where it requires and it should be biocompatible and there should be enough strength to withstand the occlusal forces and also the rigidity then it should have good longevity. Uh, the FPD is uh, we should make it as rigid as possible because any flexural uh, forces during mastication or para function may cause a pressure on the gingiva and there are chances of fracturing of veneering material or the pontic and the occlusal contacts should not occur at metal porcelain junctions because if the contacts junction if the contact is at the metal porcelain junction there is high chances of fracture and the pontic material it should have ability to resist plaque accumulation because the amount of surface roughness is directly proportional to the plaque accumulation surface roughness is directly proportional to plaque so less surface roughness that is more polished pontic we have less plaque so the most ideal material is gold then the glazed porcelain and ceramic so it is having the most polished surface so it requires very less plaque compared to porcelain and the least one is ceramic it depends upon the surface roughness and the polished surface now regarding the occlusal forces to withstand the occlusal forces it has been suggested to reduce the buccolingual dimension of the pontic by 30 percentage so 30 percentage reduction in buccolingual direction but uh, in case of parafunctional habits or accidental biting on a hard object, this may not be efficient. Okay, normal cases, 
this would be ideal but para patient has para functional habits or accidental biting this would not be sufficient so that will uh, disrupt the harmonious and stable occlusal relationship so uh, normal pontic width uh, at least at the occlusal third is recommended so we can keep the normal pontic width at the occlusal third okay so but uh, when the ridge is collapsed buccolingually this is not possible so always try to keep the normal pontic width at least the occlusal third so that was all about the biological factors now we have the mechanical considerations in mechanical considerations these are the factors we need to think about while uh, placing a pontic that is uh, the factors which can lead to fracture of the processes or displacement of the retainer so they are the choice of material that is if we have a poor choice of material it will lead to the fracture of processes and if a design is uh, poor or the framework design is not good that also leads to the fracture then the preparation we need to have a good preparation with adequate clearance if the preparation is not good that also leads to the fracture and the occlusion occlusion will leads to fracture if it is not proper so when metal ceramic pontics are chosen extending the porcelain onto the occlusal surface to achieve better aesthetics should be carefully evaluated because there is high chance of a fracture when it is extended to the occlusal side then porcelain may also abrade the opposing dentition if the occlusal contacts are on enamel or dentin so we need to think about the contacts keeping on enamel and dentin so that is about the mechanical uh, consideration now we have the aesthetic part so aesthetic it is a priority of the patient because uh, the patient uh, when he wants to replace a pontic or the tooth in the anterior part his main concern is aesthetic so we have three factors uh, in aesthetics that is gingival interface incisive or gingival length and the mesio distal width gingival interface so an aesthetically successful pontic will replicate the form contour incisal edge gingival and incisal embrasures and color of the adjacent tooth so we need to think about all those minute factors such as the form contour incisal edge gingival and the incisal embrasures and the color of the adjacent tooth then only we will get a good aesthetics attention to be uh, paid to the contour of labial surface so always the label is the most visible part so we need to give more importance to the label part so the contour of this label surface as it approaches the tissue that is a pontic tissue surface uh, we need to be more uh, careful so that it uh, looks like a natural tooth so that is most important part in gingival interface the pontic tissue junction so we can always go for modified ridge lap which is recommended for most anterior teeth because it compensates for the lost buccolingual width in the ridge by overlapping the existent ridge so this compensate that loss of uh, alveolar ridge in the buccolingual dimension after extraction and we can also think about the ovate pontic which can be used in conjunction with the alveolar preservation uh, or soft tissue augmentation which can also provide very remarkable appearance now regarding the incisive or gingival length so obtaining a correctly sized pontic simply by duplicating of the original tooth is not at all possible so ridge resorption will make the tooth look too long in the cervical region however an abnormal labiolingual position is not so obvious hence it is used to improve appearance by recontouring the gingival half of the labial surface so always we need to concentrate on the gingival half of the labial surface and another solution is uh, to shape the pontic to simulate a normal crown and root with emphasis on the cj so we create a cj if the gingival part is more so we can create a root portion with creation of a cj or we can also use a pink acrylic to recreate the gingival part now regarding the mesio distal width frequently space available for the pontic is less than the contralateral tooth because uh, there is always migration of the adjacent tooth into the edentula space because the patient is coming to the clinic after one year or uh, two years so by the time 
the tooth which is adjacent to the edangular space might have migrated to this space and the space must have been lost so this discrepancy can be corrected by orthodontic repositioning or the space uh, discrepancy can corrected also by altering the shape of the proximal area by duplicating the mesial half of the tooth and adjusting the size of the distal half you can see here we are duplicating the mesial half and then adjusting the size of the distal half so that was about the aesthetic consideration so this is the pontic design with its factors involving in pontic designs they are biological mechanical and aesthetic in biological we have ridge contact then oral hygiene considerations pontic material occlusal forces in mechanical we need to think about the material framework tooth preparation and occlusion in aesthetics we have the gingival interface and so gingival length and mesial distal width so that was all about the factors uh, in last session we finished the pontic designs the facing and the true pontics that is um, uh, the sanitary pontic ovate conical rich lap pontic all, all those things so this is a very commonly asked essay question sometimes this both will be asked together that is a pontic design and the factor sometimes will be a separate one hope you understood this topic i'll come up with a new topic in fixed partial denture thank you